That's right, it's time for the obligatory, super boring, and uninteresting day 3 video from a content creator at the beginning of new content. So at this point, you might as well click away and you won't be missing anything. I promise that no robots were hurt in the making of this video, except for the ones that died, but we don't talk about those, and that I'm definitely not going to be talking about anything relevant at all. With that out of the way, how has my league start gone? Well, I decided to start Corrupting Fever. Because the main advantage of Corrupting Fever is I can sell any of my gear that I don't use to either another Corrupting Fever character or to a Seismic Trapper. And that plan has been going absolutely brilliantly. I did a lot of experimentation in my early to mid mapping because I was unhappy with some of the aspects of my build and wanted to change things around. Every time I did, I had no problem selling most if not all of my old gear for more than I paid or more than it cost me to craft. I also found out that Sentinel is kind of ridiculous, to the point where I am starting to lose count of the raw exalt drops, but I believe I am up to 8 raw exalt drops from Sentinel Empowered Mobs, with a nice spicy bonus of an inspired learning. If you want to know what I'm doing in terms of Sentinel, well, yesterday I made a video talking about that, and it should be in the card right now, so feel free to check that out after this. But now, let's get into talking a little bit about my character, the Corrupting Fever Gladiator. I started out by leveling with Spectral Helix and Bleed. I also made a video talking about my early leveling experiences, which is again in the card. I then transitioned into a Spellslinger Corrupting Fever build with a triggered Exsanguinate. From there, I tried a bunch of things as I moved up into yellow and red maps. What I found was Reap hits pretty hard, but it costs so much life that it didn't really feel worth it, especially because I was running Reap in a dedicated 6 link. I was of course using a pseudo 5 link with 30% more damage over time gloves for my Corrupting Fever. From there, I tried Exsanguinate, I tried using Unleash, and I tried sticking to good old Spellslinger. The thing that felt the best, to be honest, was actually the Spellslinger, which I think is because KB doesn't hit that many times on single target. And if you're hand casting Reap or hand casting Exsanguinate, you don't really stack your Corrupting Fever up, so your damage feels very minimal, especially if you have to go dodge. Unleash did help with this, and Unleash felt the second best, but it just wasn't quite up to par, as opposed to how smoothly I could trigger it with a Spellslinger. So if you're playing this build, I do recommend the Spellslinger version using a plus one Fizz Wand and a plus one Fizz Shield. However, big caveat here. The damage isn't going to be amazing unless you can get the plus one fizz wand, plus one fizz shield, and plus one fizz amulet. I was able to pick all of these up relatively early on. As I remember, I paid about 20c for my wand, I think the same-ish for my shield, although I wasted a bunch of money trying to get a suppression one. Uh, recombinators are really good. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to force plus one fizz onto a spell suppression base, although that's definitely something that you could do. You'd probably have to use fractures, and those were a little bit outside of my budget for messing around with stuff. So instead, I was just using a pretty generic plus one, and then I had a plus one amulet that I forget how much it cost. It's garbage. I shouldn't be using it. However, about halfway through the day, a live search popped for a Corrupting Fever bow. The bow is kind of garbage. But it was only 4 exalts, and making a good bow costs around 10 exalts. So I decided that I'd probably at some point be able to cut my losses and sell it for at least as much as I paid, seeing as it does have physical damage over time, and plus 1 plus 2. Unfortunately, it's not multi-modded, and it doesn't have dot multi. So this is either someone's interim weapon or a failed craft, either way I'm happy to have it as it let me swap over to bows. Bow Corrupting Fever feels a lot smoother than Wand Corrupting Fever, even though my total damage didn't actually change that much, on paper I think it went down slightly, it feels way higher now. Which I'm gonna guess is because I'm putting 10 stacks of Corrupting Blood on reliably instead of having to have them ramp up and down and up and down as I move and dodge mechanics. But now, enough of that boring stuff like my build. We're here for the important part of a video. The part where you like and subscribe, since I like seeing numbers go bigger, you like seeing numbers go bigger, and we both win. Though maybe you're in the mood for a little bit of something else. Then you might like my second channel, which is of course linked in the card, where I talk about several news topics, including the delay of a much anticipated game, Starfield. Trust me, I'm as disappointed as you are, or maybe not because maybe a really awesome PoE League will come out right then, and I'll be super glad that the game was delayed. For now though, what have I been doing in terms of my Atlas strategy and making money? My main Atlas strategy has been a combination of Expedition plus Harvest. The reason for this is I wanted to craft Fizz Clusters, so I needed Harvest. 
I wanted a curse on hit ring, so I needed harvest. And expedition just prints money, so if you're not using it, you're probably inting. However, more recently, what I've been doing is a strategy that's straight out of Legion. Which is to say, I've been running glacier maps, killing everything in the big room, empowering as many things as possible, using Ruckus for even more loot. Then most of the time, I just run to the back area, I check to see if there's a harvest or an expedition. If there is, I do it. If not, I leave. And I don't kill the boss because he's an annoying goat, and he has a bunch of ads and he takes forever to spawn. When I'm not doing this, I'm doing logbooks. Because logbooks are awesome, and as I mentioned before, Expedition prints money. So far, this build has been handling mapping very well. This build has also been handling logbooks very well. Is the single target spectacular? No, it's not spectacular. It's behind something like a seismic trapper for sure, but it's not that far off of something like Righteous Fire. At the moment, I'm a little bit squishier than a Righteous Fire character, but that's because in my swap over to bows, I was spell suppression capped with my shield. Uh, I'm not wearing a shield anymore in case anyone hadn't noticed, so I'm no longer spell suppression capped. Once I fix that, I think my defenses will be in a really good spot. As I've got a decent mix of evasion and armor, my flasks come back when I'm hit, so they have a pretty good uptime. And I'm pretty close to working in total elemental ailment avoidance via abusing fractured mods on my boots. I think I just need the chest craft and then to fix an implicit. Don't quote me on that though. And so that is everything that I've done around day three of Sentinel. If you're still leveling and you're playing Corrupting Fever Gladiator, I strongly suggest that you stick with Spellslinger until the damage really starts to fall off, since in terms of quality of life and playstyle, Spellslinger was by far the best. On the other hand, if you want the absolute most damage, you're probably going to want to go with something like a self-cast Exsanguinate or a self-cast Reap. It feels really bad to self-cast them with zero cast speed. Zero out of ten, do not recommend. Once you swap over to bows, you'll need an empower and a decent bow to swap over to bows, but once you do, it feels way smoother, and that's when the build really starts to get good. If you're looking for ways to make money, definitely don't do harvest or expedition. Also, recombinators are garbage and you probably shouldn't pick them up. So are sentinels. Definitely don't pick up sentinels, and definitely don't use pandemonium sentinels. Now, I'm going to assume that everyone watching will heed my warning and do none of the things I just said, but in case you ignored that advice, you can check the video card and you'll find a handy guide for logbooks from 317. The exact numbers and costs and prices are going to be totally different. The basic concept, still perfectly applicable. Oh yeah, I've also been rolling Tujin and using a lot of my currency. Finally, what are my thoughts on the Arch Nemesis modifiers and the nerfs and the changes and all that? Personally, I don't think the Arch Nemesis mods were that bad as a whole. There were certainly outliers, Herald of Obelisk was absolutely terrible since it sometimes would bug out and not despawn. People were making way too big of a deal out of Rejuvenator, I played Righteous Fire for about a month during 317, I didn't even know that was a thing, it was so irrelevant to my build. I know, moving out of mechanics is a novel concept for some players, and all jokes aside, it can be hard if you're lagging, especially on console. So I won't say this nerf didn't help anyone. But on the whole, I'm glad to see targeted adjustments to pain points with specific mods, rather than just another blanket generic nerf. And I'm especially glad to see the change to Effigy, since it was very hard to see when Effigy was actually active and a threat. It was also quite hard to see the safe zone dead on top of Mana Siphoner. I tend to run up to things anyway out of habit, so I found it relatively quickly, but I can see why someone might miss it, especially if they're scared of a monster, since monsters can be scary. So how has your league start gone? Have you done the classic day 3 reroll, or are you still going strong? Have you killed an uber boss yet, or like me, are you still progressing through your atlas? Have you made lots of currency, and have you abused any robots to get lots of exalted orbs? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, be sure to put them down in the comments below, or join the discord where you can ask questions, get build help, and hang out with the community. A special thanks to my patrons and YouTube channel members. They're awesome, and they get to show it by having their name on screen in the credits of all my videos. So if you want to see your name here, be sure to check the link in the description. For more general gaming content, check out my second channel, 10 Gaming Thoughts, and if you want a water bottle or a cool shirt, I have a link to my official merch shop in the description. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you again sometime soon.